Welcome to Unique. This is your host, Dr. Akudo Ehirim. And for today's show, we are going to be talking about immune system and cancer preventive measures. And here in the studio to talk about it is Dr. Angie Ubasi. Hello. Dr. Ozo Onukua. I'm glad to be here. Guys, a lot of you wrote in. A lot of you text me, a lot of you called, you expressed your opinion about the two shows we did on cancer and high blood pressure, and you all wanted us to revisit the topic, talk about preventive measures, talk about immune system, and here are two experts in the field who are going to empower, who are going to educate, inform, give you guys the awareness, create awareness. And we are going to start right from the top. Let's start with you, Dr. Angie. Give us your views on the basic principles of health. What are the basic things we need to do to stay healthy? Health is a wide scope uh, concept we have to look into. But the thing about health is that God so created man. Mm -hmm. And knowing that man was, is precious to him, he gave us laws to guide and direct us. Exactly. Ezekiel 47, 12, he said the fruit will be for food and the herbs for medicine. Even Genesis 2, leave us 9, it tells us the type of food we eat. What I'm trying to say is that God gave us rules that he created plants and animals to be a source of feeding the body. Mm -hmm. We are co-creator with God because we need to take care of the body. And when he did that, we're supposed to follow it. Unfortunately, in the modern time, we've gone astray. We left everything. What does not eat us is what we eat. It tastes good, it smells good, it looks good. That's what we take. Exactly. Unfortunately, for that, we created all sorts of problems. Our forefather, uh, Dr. Ben Bernard Jensen, gave us nine dietary laws. Okay. The food we're supposed to eat has to be fresh, healthy, and um, nourishing. And uh, there are nice dietary laws. I don't know if you, we have time for me to give. You can mention them, yeah. Few. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, the nine dietary law says that our food should be uh, whole, natural, and uh, pure. And the second law he gave us was that uh, we have to eat the food in proportion. We do not just eat uh, just any because food because we like it. We, like it. Exactly. we have to eat six vegetables, two fruits, one starch, and one protein. You know, most people, they eat a big plate of meat and uh, one big uh, potatoes and then uh, baptize it with alcohol or juice. <laughs> uh, the third law is the law of alkaline and acid. Okay. Uh, the food we're supposed to eat has to be 80% alkaline and 20% acid. Uh, we have to do all these things, not because it's just a law to make people go for something. It's things to help the body handle mm -hmm. and uh, stress and stuff like that. Yeah, and also function right. So mm -hmm. that's, these are the basic things. The, fifth, uh, the fourth law is that we have to eat variety of food. And the fifth law is that... Uh, our diet should uh, be 60% raw vegetables, raw vegetables, 60% daily, and... 60% yeah, uh, daily? Yeah, raw vegetables, and they should be natural. And when we do that, that's when we are able to put enzymes in our system okay. and the minerals. But when we cook, uh, eat all this cooked and processed food, we, are, we have nothing to go by. And the sixth law is the law of natural cure we say that the body heals itself but you have to give it what it needs and the seventh law is law of moderation we have to be moderate about what we eat and the eighth law is law of deficiency if we don't do all the above we're going to build deficiency in our system and that is when disease comes that in really things fall apart and the uh, and the uh, and the ninth law is law of combination no matter how good the food you bring about you have to combine them pro properly. You don't eat starch with meat. But that's what American diet, standard American diet is. Hamburger with meat. 
That's what my basic concept is. We have to eat properly so we can digest it, assimilate it. If we do not digest, assimilate, and eliminate, we are in big trouble. Okay. Let's hear from you, Dr. Ozo. What are your views on the basic you know, principles of health? Of first, a healthy living? Mm -hmm. First of all, without principle, there is no practice. Okay. And every practice has to be based on sound biblical background and sound scientific principle. And nutrition is key in the sense that once we forget food or once we eat out of nature, we denature. Most of the diseases we have actually are nutritional diseases. And first of all, let's even recap to, to let and see the things that cause sickness and disease in the first place. By right, we are supposed to be ease. We are supposed to be happy. God created us perfectly because he said we are you know wonderfully and and beautiful, beautiful made. Mm -hmm. made now five things first of all we need air mm -hmm. we need water mm -hmm. we need food we need movement before we even think about drugs wow so um, drug is like the last resort drug <laughs> is not even necessary in 85 percent of cases yes okay first of all okay Let's go to air. You can survive five minutes without air. 40 days without food. Seven days without water. And of course, you know that the body was built to be dynamic. In other words, exercise, you have to move the body mm -hmm. before we even think about drug. Unfortunately, we're in a drug-pushing society and people find it difficult to change their dietary habit either because of one convenience or the other, and I, would, and I will explain. I will break it down so that we can take it down. One of the things about drug pushing society is such that before, 75% of drugs were made from herbs, from plants. Okay. Now, the opposite is the case. It's kind of reverse, whereby drugs constitute 85% because what pharmaceutical companies do, or the big pharmacy, or the so called science of reductionism mm -hmm. what they do is that they take the herbs then isolate the active ingredients or what they think is the active ingredient because there are so many things that is in there mm -hmm. that we don't even know okay. now when they isolate it they have to you know synthesize it mass produce it it becomes a drug they are not doing it even with vitamins because most pharmaceutical companies has even you know jumped into the <coughs> vitamin bandwagon and you mm -hmm. see all these vitamins in the store. Most of them are synthetic petroleum products. Buy one, get one free. And, 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 I, and I don't want to denigrate some of the vitamins. You know it, the one that say one a day and the one that we've been using for a long time. All those things are nothing. It's like expensive urine because they are not whole food vitamin. They are killed. They are processed. Okay. In fact, the daylight has gone out of it. The light, the electricity, the vibrancy, and the nutrients are gone because they are not living food. And it's only living people need living food. And if you want to stay fresh, eat fresh. Now, let's go back to air. People already assume that we breathe, even though that 85, uh, rather 65% of us do not make use of full capacity of our of lungs. Our lungs. Because mm -hmm. people don't like to exercise. Uh, people, especially aerobic exercise, are exercises that you do to bring in air in and out of the body. But I'll talk about exercise later. Say so air is so important, but we don't worry about air. Um, we assume everybody is breathing. But the next thing is water. Seventy percent of our body consists of water. In fact, children, newborn babies are about 90, 92 percent. That shows us that seventy percent of our food is supposed to consist of liquid diet or water, so to speak. Now, why did I say that? After you remove air. After five minutes, if you don't have, if you don't breathe, you die. But after seven days, if you don't have water, trouble. The body become like I said, this ease. In other words, lack of ease because mm -hmm. we are right. eating yeah, exactly like, because we didn't eat. We eat off of nature. Mm -hmm. Anytime you eat off of nature or outside nature, you denature. Okay. Okay. Now. Because food is so important. I, I, I hear a lot of doctors, which is very unfortunate, tell you, well, diet has nothing to do with it. 
I've seen people who have cancer and they told me, well, they asked their doctor, orthodox uh, medicine or conventional medicine. He said, well, doctor, what will I change? What will I avoid? Because the doctor is never trained in nutrition and natural remedies. They are pushing drugs. That's why I call them drug pushing society. Because they are pushing drugs and drugs are chemicals, synthetic chemicals. Mm -hmm. They are pushing drugs. They say, well, diet has nothing to do with it. Instead of telling me, I don't know. Or I'll find out. That is a problem. So food is the single most important factor in your healing, in your recovery, in your awareness, in your wholeness. And it affects the mind, it affects the spirit, it affects the soul. Even affects your energy and performance. Food is very, very critical because even though we don't, eat to, we don't live to eat, we eat to live. Now, child of God, another thing that is very important is movement. The body is dynamic. In other words, it was created to move. Part of that is that people simply can't exercise for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And normally my advice is, is, is such that why not make it fun? For instance, I don't just exercise normally. I play table tennis. Mm -hmm. So when you make it fun and make it a game, mm -hmm. it, exercise is better that way. So the, the body, sooner or later, if you don't exercise, the body will start degenerating and will tell you that you don't need energy. Just because you don't decide. And the first muscle to go is the heart muscle. That's why heart disease is number one cause, apart from what we put in our body. Wow, so the first muscle to go is the heart muscle. Yes, it wow. starts degenerating. That's why heart disease is very common. If you see people who die, 50% of them at least has to do with high blood pressure, stroke, you know, heart failure, heart disease in general, including brain attacks, we call stroke. They are all cardiovascular system related or circulatory uh, disturbances okay and then drug who is the last and that's why i talked a little bit about drug the problem with drug is that they are all chemicals and more or less every drug has nasty side effects something that should heal you is not supposed to give you trouble you have that. that's the thing i always say you you take one medication for one sickness but the side effect comes with five other sicknesses so if, that that disease is that's what i don't understand in fact i was a living witness when my father had high blood pressure, actually that was what took me into nutritional research. He was taking the medicines faithfully. People know it, the water pill, um, the one they call Adomet, and also one that, the one they call Lozatan, and then, you know, the one that called Brinadine. He was taking them faithfully. And the funny thing with high blood pressure is that it is the drug that gives the side effect. High blood pressure doesn't give side effect generally, and that's why we call it silent killer. Now, when he, start, when he started taking the drug, the nasty side effect actually made him not to comply with it. And yet, he was taking it faithfully, and I thought it what would cure him, because that was what I knew as at that time. Mm -hmm. So, the point is that drugs are not meant to, for human beings, really, and truly. And I'll quote, give a quote, and the quote is not from alternative physicians. The quote is not even from uh, acupuncturists or Ayurvedic medicine or any of the Haba mm -hmm. doctors that we know. The quote is from professor of medicine that actually developed John Hawkins Department of Medicine. His name is Sir William Osler. He made a statement and I quote. He said, one of the chief duties of a physician is to educate the masses not to take medicine. Wow. And I don't know about you, but when I was a little kid, man, when they gave me that warm speller or malaria tablet, I'll run away for, from home for two days just because I don't, I don't even, I, I will run away. So if some people find it ironic that I'm now, you know, when you tell my mother she laughs because she knows that I run away from drugs. I hated drugs. So even today, people tell me I don't like drugs. I say, yeah, because we are not actually designed to take drugs. We are designed to make food our best medicine. Okay. So viewers, you're listening. We are hearing it from the experts. Dr. Angie talked about the nine basic principles of health, what you should eat. Our food should be more alkaline. She talked about eating in moderation. She talked about eating, eating combinations, combining it the right way. She touched a lot of areas. She talked about our food should be 60% raw so that we can get the enzymes and the minerals and all we need. Dr. Angie also mentioned things also. When you eat, how you should eat, eat more vegetable. Two servings of fruit, vegetable, this and that. And you heard what Dr. Ozo said. 
Dr. Oz talked about the five basic things we need to be healthy. He talked about the air that we breathe, it has to be clean. Mm -hmm. Use your lungs to its full capacity. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ozo also mentioned about the water. So many of us don't like to drink water. And I, number one, I'm guilty of that. I don't like the smell of water, but I'm learning, guys. So let this be a gradual process. We are all work in progress, okay? But I'm learning how to drink water because water is very healthy for you. And then he talked about number three, his own food, minding what you eat, making it natural, making it raw, getting the enzymes. Then he also talked yeah. about movement. We should be able to move. Yes. Even if you can't go to the gym, for those of us that don't like to go to the gym, you can walk down your step up and down. You can walk down the street. You can walk around your house. You can play football with your children outside. You can play basketball. And finally, he talked about drugs. He said drugs, that's the last resort. That human beings are not meant to take drugs. If we can do the right thing, eat in proportion, eat in, in combination, eat more of vegetables, more of fruits, drink plenty of water, move the right way. Guys, they are telling us that we'll be healthy. Mm -hmm. Then there will be no breathing space for diseases and sicknesses. Exactly. That way we don't need anything to cure us. Just like you said, prevention. If we can prevent all this and do all this, then we can be able to stay healthy. Now, let's enlighten these people too. Let it, let's empower everybody, including me. So, these are the basic principles. These are the five things, rule of law, that we need to stay healthy. What if we are deficient in this area? What if we are eating whatever we want? What if we, we, we have tried our best? It's not working. We don't have time. We are in America. There's no time for exercise. There's no time to go to the gym. I don't have time to run around with my children. Then that audience sitting right there in front of the TV saying, what are they talking about? When do I have time? I work 16 hours every day. Guys, what happened? What are the results? What are the deficiencies? If we don't follow these principles, these rules, what happens? Dr. Obasi. Just to concur with uh, Dr. Ozo, he said that uh, Dr. Uh, like, we're not supposed to take medicine. Yes. Our predecessor, Dr. Thomas Edison, says that the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will be interested in his patient or client in the cure of the human frame. Okay. So, uh, in, the, in the care of the human frame, in the diet and in the cure and uh, prevention of diseases, mm -hmm. if we do that, we will not have diseases. But because we don't do that, we have disease. Disease is not at ease. Health is balance. Yes. We go out of balance. We create things that we're not supposed to create. In the modern time, most of the food we eat are mucus forming. Wow. And to expatiate on that, mm -hmm. mucus forming food are milk, dietary, uh, cheese, uh, processed food, mm -hmm. processed uh, grains, all, all, the meal, all the things that we are eating, sugar, all of them are mucus forming. You wonder why we are fat or sick? Because when the mucus get into our system, they start forming things, lumps and tumors. Like uh, when I deal with people who have fibroid, the first thing I encourage them to do is get out of all meats. Because mm -hmm. first of all, the meat we eat nowadays is uh, chemicalized. They give them different... Uh, it's not even fresh and raw anymore. And the, the, mm -hmm. the animal is chemically uh, grown. Mm -hmm. So if we do not eat right, the first thing we do is create disease. And uh, these diseases have symptoms. Fortunately, unfortunately, that's what we're dealing with in the modern time. Mm -hmm. We treat symptoms... And leave the main cause. Yes. Okay. And then when we treat symptoms, such as uh, uh, circulatory uh, problem, heart disease, di diabetes, arthritis, um, high blood pressure, cancer, mm -hmm. all this is at the consequences of going astray. And what happens, they are brought about by deficiencies and um, also the fat, the food we've eaten are also all acidic. Remember I said 20% of our food is supposed to be acidic and 80% alkaline. alkaline. Yeah. But the food we eat, if anybody can be checked now, you see it's like we are 98% acidic and the 2% wow. alkaline. No wonder we are all sick. 
Yeah, major so that's what yeah. it is. Yeah. Okay, chime in on that. What the, now that the deficiencies, what okay, people that don't follow this rule, majority of us, let us be honest, majority of us, we do not follow these principles. We do not follow these rules. So can you tell the audience what are the results of the day? What are the results? What are the deficiencies? What happens when we don't follow these laws? Well, one of the things that happen if we don't follow the right eating habits, we degenerate. So that's why we call it degenerative diseases. Our body starts breaking down. Mm -hmm. Our body starts manifesting symptoms. Pain, for instance. Some people think they can live with minor aches and pain. No, pain is abnormal. It doesn't matter whether it's headache, which is pain in the head. So those it, things it, are symptoms of something exactly. bigger. Exactly. They are not the sickness. No, so if you're having no. headache, if, it might be a symptom exactly. of something else. Exactly. Wow. For instance, headache can be a symptom of too much toxicity mm. because toxins in the body tend to accumulate. accumulate. A lot of food we eat now we won't get the result now. The body will try to cope. The body will try to, it. you know, the body always try to go to balance. And we call it homeostasis, mm -hmm. you know, and or equilibrium. And mm -hmm. if it doesn't go into balance, it will break down. And when it breaks down, catabolism or breakdown will take over building up, which is anabolism because metabolism has two parts. Now, another thing that happened with deficiency or depletion, because mm -hmm. sometimes it's not just the deficiency, it's the, it's the depletion. depletion. In other exactly. words, we are eating, you know, let's say we eat white rice. Well, white rice is proce processed or bleached rice. Okay. So it lacks at least 32 nutrients, including wow. minerals. Just white rice? The white rice. That's why it's bleached. That's why it's white. Okay. Normal rice is supposed to be brown or like this mm -hmm. yellow. Mm -hmm. Now, it lacked chromium. It lacked selenium. It lacked the B-complex vitamins. And it, all these things are removed in the processing or the milling process. Now, after that, they now put some vitamins on it and say fortified or enriched. Or oh, enriched. So yes. that's why they put exactly. that with Exactly. So that when you see those words, you, you know what, enriched. exactly. Okay. So this is what created the disease because at the so end of the day. So hold on a second, Dr. Oza. I want you to, to emphasize on that again for our audience out there. You know, we are not experts like you okay. guys. So rice, for example. Yeah, because we eat a lot of rice and chicken. We eat a lot of rice. And chicken. And, and you say most it's of them, processed. Mm -hmm. But once we see enriched yes, or it, fortified yes, on the bus, yes. that means that rice is lacking 32 nutrients, Miner, exactly. minerals, but they have added some things yes. to it. And if you keep on eating it, you may end up with high blood pressure. That is number one sign. Wow. And okay. it doesn't happen overnight. Now, an untrained doctor in nutrition will tell you, well, it's genetics, and they want to fix it with drugs. Another problem. See, headache is not because of lack of aspirin. Mm -hmm. The cure for any problem is in the cause. Okay. Now, headache could be due to toxin. It could be due to hormonal imbalance. It could be due to brain tumor. It could be due to trauma. It could be due to stress or distress. Okay, it could even be due to constipation. Wow. Back up. And some people, if you ask them, they go to restroom or move their bowel about two, three times a week, which is what they should do in a day. Wow. And an average doctor will tell you, well, it's okay. You can take Because he for forgot it. about the law of process. That sickness is a continuum, it's a process. From vibrant health, on to terminal illness. So a lot of people at the middle, at that time, the test can even read normal. Mm -hmm. So I hear people all the time, they bring me lab tests and say, oh, the doctor says everything is all right. I say, no, 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 no. I want to see what is all right. I want to go through the test. 90% of the time, I begin to tell them, what is this? I begin to tell them what is wrong with their test. Yet there are times when the test does not pick up the, pick problem, up the problem and the person doesn't have healthy. no symptoms exactly. and he goes to the doctor and says everything is all right but they are still sick and they know that something is wrong so now because most of them are looking for disease to cure to prescribe drugs the truth is that they are not promoting health health promotion is different from disease maintenance maintenance okay cure 
different from control. True. A lot of and people tell me, management. a lot of people tell me, oh, you know, my blood pressure is under control. I say, no, 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 no. I don't want to medicate. I want to eradicate. You don't want to medicate. You, you want, want to, to eradicate. eradicate. I don't exactly. want to control. I want cure. Cure. I don't want to suppress symptoms. I want to treat the root cause. Because see, sickness and disease is like a tree. The root empowers everything. Mm -hmm. What do we do in conventional medicine? We try to cut off the fruit or the root. If it's too much, is it too much? We don't like the or fruit. The branches. Yes, if, that's why after they do the cutting or it grows mastectomy, back. it comes out in another one because the root cause was not there with. So what happened in conventional medicine is that instead of looking for the root cause, they give you more medicine. Mm -hmm. Actually, medicine is part of the problem. I only use medicine in less Very than 15% right of cases. Yeah. And then I, I will not say, you know, most often the doctor will tell you, well, it's genetics. No, it's not genetics. If you are born well, you are well. When you have problem, it's you. Let's go for the root. Let's find out the cause. So it's not like cure. my grandfather no. was diabetic. No. My mom is That's diabetic. That's in only 15% of family. the family. So if, it, if it's really genetics, you should experience it when you were little. Okay, not when you're not old. When, when after 40 years, you start developing blood pressure, start blaming <laughs> grandma and grandpa. That's not the whole thing. That's not the truth. Because uh, most often the doctors will tell you, okay, okay, why is it that if it is genetic, why do you give me drug to fix it and keep on giving me appointments? Because if it's genetic, it cannot be. Exactly. Fixed. Exactly. But now we even know about genomics. Whereby we know that food can even alter genes. Okay. You understand? And what you eat affects genetics is only less than 15%. It then means that diet or food and your lifestyle Plays pretty much plays a major big role. Now, another thing ap apart from deficiency at the, the uh, depletion is what uh, Dr. Bosi talked about toxicity and acidity. Okay. And the funny thing about acid is that they are always, always inflammatory. Because acid burns. Mm -hmm. Like infla the word inflammation came from inflame or to be on fire, fire within. Now that's one. And that thing is that they generate free radicals, the toxins mm -hmm. generate free radicals. Because I talked about processed rice. Well, that process is bleach rice. Mm -hmm. So it generates toxins, generate free radicals that attacks your DNA, that attacks your cell membrane, that attacks vital nutrients. To use for rebuilding, regeneration, and repair. It, you know, it also attacks even your mitochondria, the energy house of the cell that mm -hmm. burns energy that you know keeps us going. So these are the issues. Another thing also, child of God, that create disease is with all this toxicity and acidity and deficiency, it will create hormonal imbalance, especially in women. Ninety-five percent of women, it doesn't matter whether it's fibroid or cancer. Or you know, uh, uh, ovarian cyst, endometriosis, adenomyosis, breast cancer, you know, thyroid condition, arthritis, they are all connected to imbalance, imbalance hormonal imbalance. 95% of because women are more complex because of their hormones. Mm. So imbalance is very, very important. And when you balance the body, which is one of the laws she mentioned, mm. very, very important. And that thing that causes problem is stagnation. Stagnation is the mother of all diseases. Number one selling drug after Lipiton in the United States is Nexum. Nexum is an acid blocker. It's an antacid. Mm -hmm. In fact, most people with those problems, in fact, that, that drug has grossed 3.8 million. It's only Lipiton that has grossed 3.5. Uh, no, Lipiton 5 billion. Nexum 3.8 billion every year. That shows you it's an epidemic. Mm -hmm. It's a big problem. So, because if people don't have digestive problems, such pre is the number one prescribed drug, apart from uh, uh, cholesterol drugs, mm -hmm. you know. And then another thing, of course, you know, is stress and distress. Okay. You know, stress can cause anything. And you know, the funny thing is that the body responds to stress in the same way. It doesn't matter whether it's mar marital stress. It doesn't matter whether it's nutritional mm -hmm. deficiency. It doesn't matter whether it's abusive stress. It doesn't matter whether it's job-related, about keys, or mm -hmm. about, you know, l job loss, or, or cash flow, or income stream, or relationship, or tension, or quarrel. 
the body reacts the same the way. Same way to stress. Stress. Mm -hmm. And it's not normally good. When stress continues, it starts generating toxins, start generating free radicals that damage the body and make them age faster before their time. Okay. And finally, of course, we've talked a lot about movement, which is exercise, whether we need to move the body. Mm -hmm. Over to you. All right, Dr. Obasi, he says something about imbalance, about hormonal imbalance in women. I want you to say a little bit of that before we go to commercial break. Yeah, uh, because there is no, uh, to uh, support what he's saying, the imbalance comes about by uh, because of deficiencies. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was growing up in Nigeria, uh, my grandmother usually, when you're getting to 15, 16 years of old, she will start teaching you the herbs to use to flush your system. And because it's only when I came to America, I heard the word PMS, <laughs> premenstrual syndrome. And that has nothing to do with disease. It has a lot to do with deficiency and toxicity. Most people have PMS, have deficiency of magnesium. And then if you notice, those who have PMS always eat chocolate because chocolate has yes, magnesium. magnesium. Oh, but okay. unfortunately, the they, crave they, magnesium. They, 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 they are taking it because of the sugar too. Yes. Sugar is nothing but poison. Yes. When I look at sugar, I call it poison. Especially white sugar, I call it poison. And I don't touch it. Mm. The reason is because it's very harmful. Anybody who has inflammatory conditions should not touch sugar. Because, I'm saying this to say, we're looking for a solution and we're creating more problems mm. by doing what we're doing. We're supposed to correct what we did. Mm. That cause, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, look at it. If you lack water, you need to drink eight glasses of water instead of drink, taking a, a arthritis medicine, which is acidic, which is creating more problem in your system. If you lack, uh, like, uh, green, you know, the difference between chlorophyll and your blood is that uh, your blood has hemoglobin, which makes it red, mm -hmm. and the chlorophyll is green uh, because it has magnesium. magnesium. And... Uh, that is only different. If you put more chlorophyll in your body, which you get from vegetables and all the green stuff, your body will be vibrant. You'll be moving and be happy. And, you know, look at it. Like Daniel. Daniel in the Bible. Mm -hmm. why, did you, uh, why do you think Daniel succeeded all the time when you know how many grains mm -hmm. he stayed with? Mm -hmm. Nobody had any negativity about Daniel. There are two outstanding things Daniel did. He ate natural food. He was and prayerful. Water. Mm -hmm. And he was very prayerful. He was drinking water. He never deviated. But here, if anybody gets promotion, they take him to a hotel and give you beef and all this. I yeah, say, oh, That's now. Big. Now, uh -huh, I'm, now. I'm enjoying. Uh -huh, I'm, I'm eating in good. I'm in it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, but these are things we have to consider. Yeah. All of us are foreign, especially in this land. That's what Daniel was, where he was. But, he never deviated, even when he was forced. Many of us, like he talked about stress. I'm saying this to say about hormone, mm -hmm. adrenal, yeah. adrenal glands, and all this thing has a lot to do with stress. But if you do not know how to pray, everything takes you anywhere. But if you know how to pray, embrace life, whatever you're doing, you know you're stronger than you. You quote the Bible. The, the Bible quotations are not for God, it's for you. No weapon formed against me will prosper. And you believe in it and you use it to fight whatever you're fighting. So these are the things we do to help us deal with the situation. Hormone has a lot to do with, uh, we have uh, endocrine and exocrine glands. We have to feed them. We have to find the nutrients and they are in plants. But you know, there was a time they put women on estrogen. This thing. You know what it caused in women? Many lost uh, have breast problem or female problem. All because they created artificial hormone. So there are natural stuff. Don't quail, uh, squash vine. All natural stuff that balances a woman's hormone. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Wow. I am being educated. I hope you are too. You know, so we have we have talked about deficiency. What happens when we don't follow these laws? So as long as we don't follow the basic laws, the basic principles, we don't follow the basic rules, we are leaving ourselves open for diseases. We're leaving our bodies as breathing 
ground, ground for yes. diseases. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get all these sickness. We get diabetes, we get whatever, mm -hmm. high blood pressure, cancer, mm -hmm. whatever, arthritis. arthritis. Mm -hmm. Everything comes because we're not eating right. Mm -hmm. So if we can find a way to eat right and we can prevent these things from happening, then we are going to be healthy individuals. And on that note, we're going to be right back.